Hi, my name is Sumbul Ali Karamali, and I write books that answer questions that I've always been asked about Islam and Muslims. I do this from a perspective as a Muslim American and also as someone who has a degree in Islamic law. Uh, my latest book is called Demystifying Sharia, what it is, how it works, and why it's not taking over our country. Um, so what is Sharia? Unfortunately, in the US and Europe, it's become a bit of a scare word. And this is not by accident. In 2010, a group of anti-Muslim activists decided that they wanted to introduce the idea of a scary Islamic law taking over the United States. So they went to state legislatures and they said, you have to enact anti-Sharia legislation or Sharia will take over the United States. Um, now, this was a waste of time because no religious law can take over the United States because we have a constitution that prevents that. But um, the, the lawyers and the anti-Muslim advocates were really successful. They made a lot of money and to date 14 states have enacted anti-Sharia legislation, which is most likely unconstitutional. Um, and the, the interesting thing is Sharia is very different from the notion that they wanted to introduce of a scary medieval backward law. Sharia is not even law the way that we think of law. That is, it's not rigid and enforceable. Rather, it's a mass of guidelines, religious guidelines, that mostly have to deal with personal conduct. Sharia is an Arabic word. It literally means the road to the watering place. In religious terms, it means uh, the, the road to righteousness or the path of God. Now for early Muslims in the seventh century, the question was, what do we do to be on the path of God? And so they looked to the Quran, which is the Muslim holy book, and they looked to the Sunnah, which is the words and deeds of the prophet Muhammad, uh, in order to find the answer to the question, what do I do to be on the path of God? They also interpreted the Quran and the Sunnah uh, to find more guidelines on what to do. And they filled books and books and books of interpretive literature called fiqh. Now, the fiqh is not black and white rules. It's not law. It's actually a mass of opinions and debates and arguments and guesses as to the answer to the question, what do I do to be on the path of God? So Sharia, refer in Islam refers to the Quran plus the Sunnah plus the Fiqh. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a whole system of legal analysis and loosely it can just mean Islam. So all, Islam, all Islamic scholars believed that whatever rules that they came up with, whatever religious rules they came up with, had to comply with the goals of the Sharia. And these goals were articulated as the right to life, the right to religion, the right to intellect, the right to family, and the right to resources. To me, as a Muslim American, these principles sound a lot like our US constitutional principles, but these were articulated over a thousand years ago. Contrary to what people think, Muslim lands historically were not theocracies. Those that governed were uh, generally separate from those that developed their religious law. And also for religious minorities who are living in Muslim lands, Sharia, Sharia did not apply to them. So for example, even though Muslims are not supposed to eat pork or drink alcohol, they allowed Christians to raise pigs for consumption and they allowed Jews to cultivate wine. Today, Sharia is not the law of the land anywhere in the world. Virtually all Muslim majority countries are constitutional states with Western style civil codes. In Europe and America, there's a long historical tradition of viewing Muslims as the enemy. Uh, it's a tradition that's akin to anti-Semitism. Uh, but we can overcome it if we're careful of our sources, if we make sure that we are only um, getting our information from experts in the field. Because Muslims are American and German and French, Islam is an American and European religion. And so we're actually worth getting to know. Thank you.